Final tables are being played all over Vegas and tournaments are starting on a daily basis. We've got it all here right on Poker Tonight. Since we're at the Bellagio, we figure it's probably good to give you a recap of today's Bellagio Cup events. Today, the second event out of the Bellagio Cup's 18 events began at 1 p.m. We are here in the Fontana Lounge to give you guys an update on the Bellagio Cup 3 Series. The event that starts today was a $2,500 buy-in, no limit event, and it started at 1. There are 53 players left of 103 that started, and the total prize pool is just under $250,000. Now, the event number 1 that started yesterday is playing out its final table right behind us on that stage. The buy-in was $1,500, and a total field of 145 players generated a prize pool of $210,000. Card players will be here at the Bellagio all summer, so stay tuned to our site for all of the tournament action. And to begin today's recap of tournament action, we had our $1,500 buy-in shootout event that was slated to begin today at noon, but the cards didn't really get into the air until about 1 p.m. today. Now, in a shootout, it's basically a series of single-table satellites, uh, where the winner of each one moves on. So it began about 1 o'clock. Some of the winners today were Joe Seabach, Barry Greenstein, and Daniel Negreanu. The second round of play will begin today at around 8 p.m. Now, the final table of the World Championship Ladies event is going on right now as we speak. The current shift leader is Katya Thader. Now, she's a member of Team Poker Stars. There was over 1,200 entrants in this tournament, and that built a really big prize pool, over a million dollars for a ladies event. It's wow. really impressive. Very impressive prize pool, Barry. That's a lot of bling for the ladies. Yeah. The $5,000 buy in World Championship Limit event also plays its final table today. William Thorson was the chip leader going into the final table, and as of the showtime tonight, he still is. There were 257 entrants in this event, and the total prize pool was $1.2 million. Now, today was also day two of the $2,500 No Limit Tournament. Lars Bonding went into today as the chip leader, and he's still the chip leader. He's doing something right. That's right. Second in chips was John the Razor fan. Always seems to be in there every single year, at least making one final table, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. That's right. The $2,000 buy-in Stud Eight or Better Tournament is also on its day two today. Steve Weiss started out the day as chip leader, and the current chip leader is John Saka. Also remaining are Jeff Madsen, John Juwanda, Greg Weimer, and Men the Master Win. One of the participants who took part in the shootout was poker pro Isabel Mercier. Now, Isabel was knocked out early on day one, so she came by the Bellagio to talk to us about her feelings about this year's World Series and also the curtained final table. Isabel, what event did you play this morning? The shootout, 1500 today, no limit. I was really looking forward for it, but, uh, you know, it's quite kind of a quick tournament because yeah. you can bust out really quick. It's not like regular. You have 3,000 chips and it's just one table, so it usually goes. I mean, you bust out or you win your table <laughs> very quick. So what was your table like? Was everybody pretty aggressive? Yeah, no, actually, I had a great table. I mean, I had a great image. Things were going fantastic. I just got very unlucky, what particularly happened? today. I mean, it just happens sometimes. It's like I have two pair and the guy has a set and stuff like that. I made the straight, he made the flush and it's kind of tough because it's, it's not a deep stack tournament yeah. where the guy goes all in and I can really think and fold it's just I have no chips. So okay, the guy goes all in, I have two pair, I'm going to call. Yeah. <laughs> I might have just a pair, it's possible. So uh, I was a little bit unlucky today honestly. So what do you think about the World Series this year so far? Uh, I think it's good. I mean, I like it. I feel good. I'm really looking forward for my first final, but I kind of, uh, I, the first days were a little rough. I think things are pretty smooth right now. They usually start on time. I really like the fact that the dinner break is 7.30. Yeah. No matter what happens, this I like. It's not changing every day and you don't know. So, no, I think so far it's going pretty good cool for, for what it is. I mean, it's a big organization. Could be better, could be worse. <laughs> what do you think about the turnouts these tournaments have been having? Um, I think the, the online problem is a little bit, uh, um, what's the word, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed because okay. of that. I think it's very important to play and practice online, so it's kind of, I think the, the fields are smaller because of the online problems we've been having right now. I hope this is going to be settled as soon as possible because it is so important to play online and practice online. So do you think that some of the bills that are right now being proposed in the United States will eventually become law and online poker will again be? I'm totally sure, legitimate. I'm, I'm sure it will. I mean, I don't see how it wouldn't be the case. I mean, so many people want to play. This is such a great game. It's a great discipline. I mean, I am very disappointed <laughs> this situation. It's the way it is. And I'm sure it's going to change. It's just a matter of time. I'm just hoping as fast as possible. Have you heard people talking about it down at the World Series? Is it a common topic? A little bit. I mean, people... The undercurrent. Really, uh, yeah, it's, it would be so good for us, all poker players, if, if the situation would change and it would help so much with the sponsorship and big 
cooperation and the visibility of the game. So yeah, people talk about it a little bit. We are really looking forward for this yeah. moment. <laughs> Have you seen any online qualifiers playing? I know that they're not supposed to qualify online. The World Series said they wouldn't tolerate it, but I've also heard yeah. this summer slipping through the cracks. I haven't uh, really had big discussion with people, mm -hmm. but but I've met a lot of players who play online. So I haven't asked them if they qualify online or not. But a lot of players come from the online world, so I mean it's still happening, of course. And so what's the next event that we'll see you playing at? Tomorrow is the 5000 no limit. That's really my tournament. I made the final last year. I did a really really ridiculous bluff against Phil Elmuth, and that really killed me. So I want my revenge this year. I'm really looking for it for tomorrow. Do you know is your final ta excuse me is the final table of that tournament will it be shrouded? I've heard that some of them are covered in black curtains that are going to be televised. I have no idea. I know that this one is a televised tournament. Okay. Tomorrow, so I'm hoping to be in that final. I have no clue how it's going to work. Okay. If it's televised, that means that the final table will be open to an audience. So that's oh, good because okay. some people are not so happy when they can't see, have their friends and family watch them play. It's kind of it's unfortunate. A bit, uh, yeah, I think it's difficult. However, I feel like for the integrity of the game, is not maybe not so bad to have the players. Uh, just by themselves during a whole final and they don't have access. The thing with audiences uh, in between two hands, I'm going to go see Poker Stars blogger and I'm going to mm -hmm. tell him, you know, and that I had King Eight of Art and blah, 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 and this is going to be on the blog and the friend of my opponent is going to talk yeah. to him in the break <laughs> and he's going to tell him, you know, she had King Eight of Art or I read it on Poker Stars blog. So for the integrity of the, the yeah. game, it might not be that bad to have the players together without access to external information. Yeah, recently I spoke to Mel Judah and he said actually in Europe it is more common than here to have tables like that. Have you experienced that before? I did one time in the British Poker Open. It was a live tournament. It was televised live, so it was maximum wow. security. We had no electronic. We didn't have access to anything. It was really, and it's kind of cool because you really don't know what's yeah. going on. You don't even have a crowd behind. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I really liked it. This was one of my best poker experience ever. And it's really, it's a big trip. I mean, I look at my cards. Okay, all England saw them. What do I do now? <laughs> it's really, it's a big <laughs> That pressure. must feel very but, odd. Yeah, but it's kind of cool. It was one of my favorite tournament ever. Bill the Unabomber Lock also thinks that the curtains around the final table area are not such a bad idea. What, what about the final tables that they're um, curtaining off certain final tables? What do you think about I heard that? about this because of some sort of 30 minute delay thing. People should be allowed to watch because the World Public Tour and other events that are televised have audiences and still manage to catch the whole card information. How is that? Is it just they don't want to have the uh, human energy floating around or something like what? I believe it has something to do with collusion. That's what they're saying. I think that it's fine if they put everyone into a shell like that as long as A, it's a hermetically sealed environment where no phones go in or out or whatever mm -hmm. because the whole thing is defeated if somebody is, uh, let's say, they if they're not if they're not supposed to, in the spirit of the rule, have information a half an hour later like everybody else, yeah. then they should be they should not have any communication devices, etc. You have to make an even playing field. You can't leave unless you're going to have hardcore security, etc. If it's not hardcore security, then it's then they have to say this is the rules for everybody. So to have the rules match the security level without you know, I think that's what I would do. It's possible. And it wouldn't surprise me that in the quest for making a dollar in business, that those issues haven't been handled perfectly. After the interview, Locke took some time to creatively do some tongue twisters. It was so funny, we couldn't let you miss it. Uh, I'm going to add a spin on this. I'm going to read it backwards through the paper with the light pushing through and see how I do on that. And you can also follow along at home. Of all the... I don't know that word. Looks like hats. Doesn't make sense. Of all the felt I ever felt, I never felt a piece to felt. Which felt as fine as this felt felt when first I felt that felt hat felt. I slit the sheet, the sheet I slit, and on the slitted sheet I sit. So I do not score anywhere near close to a perfect hundred. Up. Oh. 98 is what they say I got. So it seems like the common sentiment among pros is that they're not that upset about the curtain final tables, although there is the opposite perspective. Have you yeah. seen any of that around? Well, I've seen that the pros who haven't yet reached the final table seem to think it's okay, an interesting idea, you know, to be able to see the whole cards on the internet. However, those who have actually made final tables are unhappy because their loved ones, their friends, their families, they can't watch them play. There's no audience, it's just 
a black right. curtain. Well, and the ones that have not made the final tables, you can't necessarily blank that statement saying they're not upset about it because Mr. Mattiso was a little bit upset when he couldn't watch one of his best friends, Phil Helmuth, take down his 11th bracelet. But you can see Mike's uh, reaction to that, I'm sure, in the next episode of The Mouthpiece on Thursday. But speaking of Phil Helmuth, how could we do this show without mentioning the record broken by Phil last night? Now, in Phil's 19-year poker career, he has won 11 World Series of Poker bracelets. The latest one graced his wrist last night when he took down the event. Congratulations to Phil Helmuth. Now, this is going to put Phil at the head of the World Series wins list. Now, Doyle Brunson and Johnny Chan right behind him with 10 bracelets each, but Phil is in his own elite club now, the 11 bracelet club. We'll catch up with Phil soon and definitely talk to him about these 11 bracelets. Do you really think Phil thinks it's that elite? Probably not. You're right. No. He's such a humble guy. Very modest individual, so he probably just takes it like another day of poker, huh? I'm sure that's what he did. Phil's a good guy. That's all for this edition of Poker Tonight, but be sure to be back tomorrow. We'll be here. We'll have another fresh episode. All right. Thank you for watching. Good night.